Welcome back to Real Chalk. I'm Jamie. I'm Sam. And we've got our head of media, Connor. How are we guys? How are we doing? Hello, Connor. All well? How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Can't complain. So this week we have a sponsor for the podcast. It's Wade. Uh, they sell protein. And we are doing a bit of a giveaway. So Connor has all the details on the giveaway. I do. I've got all the in- important info here. Um, so the giveaway we are doing is the Mega Wade Protein Bundle, which Ooh. is which is huge. So the massive get thanks. large package. The get large <laughs> package, yeah. So massive thanks to those guys. So included in it is a large 30-serving bag of protein. We have 15 of the on-the-go sachets, five flavors of each, strawberry, cream, vanilla, and rich, tro- rich chocolate. Uh, we have a shaker, a weight Velcro patch, so you can put on your weight vest for all that fun competing. Uh, and then some of the liquid... vest. Yeah. Oh, oh. nice. <laughs> and, uh, and then a liquid chalk thing. We also have a real chalk discount as well. So if you don't win, you can go to the website, use real chalk to get 20% off. So um, that's huge. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that's this week's sponsored, wade.com. And we'll announce the winner next episode, right? Yes, next episode. And to enter, just follow Wade. Follow Head On Fitness, follow Chapter 2 Fitness, and share the post. Boom. Very good. Easy. Okay, so moving on. So, Sam, you are going to hit the clock, hit our trusty timer. Yes, and uh, this week we are talking about uh, programming. Programming. I was about to say protein, because we were just talking about protein. Well, we can talk about protein. What goes in your protein shake? Um, Any extras? Usually just just protein. Uh, Yeah. I know uh, with the weight stuff, I use water, because other proteins I've used in the past was all like... If I put it with milk, it tastes nicer. But with the uh, whey, it just works with water. Um, yeah. I know you're not a milk no. drinking man. If I even smell milk, I get sick. <laughs> I, get sick. <laughs> I have to stay far, far away from milk. <laughs> and the other day, Anna was asking me to check if the milk was fresh, which was just not a good situation. Because whether it's fresh or not fresh, anytime I smell it, I start gagging. So I'm sure the not impressive. fresh milk is exponentially worse. <laughs> yes. Thankfully, I think it was fresh. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to talk about programming. I'm going to start the clock. Yeah, let's hit the clock. 10 second countdown. Um, obviously, we're doing the big giveaway this week, so we thought we'd give you some ideas of programming. So once you get your Get Large package, you know what to do with do it. Do Get Large, yes. So I guess when you first started, even before CrossFit, what kind of training were you doing? Were you following an exact program? Were you um, just messing around in the gym, that kind of stuff? Yeah, I think at the very start, I was really kind of just messing around and picking random programs off different websites. So one of the things I used to look at is bodybuilding.com. Um, but I didn't really have any idea if there was a difference between the strength work I was doing or the volume work. Basically, I just get in the, into the gym, lift something heavy to start, kind of go maybe as heavy as I can, and then just do constant burnout sets, usually just of biceps until literally you can't really move your biceps anymore. And then I was like, okay, good session done. Always finish your biceps. <laughs> yeah. um, what Very about you? How did you kick off? Um, I remember when I was doing martial arts, we just used to do loads of circuit training. So it'd be like a minute of like step ups and then a minute of, it could be something random like rows and yeah. it would just be like an hour of that and it's just without even thinking about it probably looking back it's kind of crossfitty it's kind of just like mixed and different intensities and stuff um, but then I kind of remember as you grew up a bit the I kind of started doing more bodybuilding stuff as well kind of like back squats and bench press and stuff like that Is it has he escaped? Yeah. has your dog escaped? yeah <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> the prisoner has escaped so we're up in the gym here doing the podcast and um, I've got Whiskey the Wolf Dog downstairs in the gym and I made three <laughs> massive barricades with 30 inch boxes, on all the exits. plates um, on all the exits and we've been watching them in the cameras but I can hear him scratching outside the door so unfortunately it sounds like the prisoner has escaped. We will um, be right back. so impressive did you see the barricades jamie made they were like chest height this wide oh, which one i wonder which one you broke through <laughs> thankfully the prisoner has been detained a few tranquilizer darts and i managed to get him so um we're, we're back on track back in action <laughs> that's so funny because i it got very quiet downstairs so you can kind of see some stuff from the cameras there and then it got very quiet and i just heard at the door, it's like, oh no, he's found yeah, us. Literally, <laughs> oh no. And he can open doors, push and pull, and no one is safe when he's released, literally. Oh. And we said we're going to do a challenge next week at Sam Darley where we're going to um, <laughs> yeah. strap stakes around his body and make him run around the gym and see we're how long he lasts with whiskey chasing him. Yeah, yeah. Or, or just release Darley up the road and see how far he gets. Yeah, I think it's do a like a job. distance challenge. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. For <laughs> reference, how, how much does he weigh again? 
70 kilos. <laughs> 70 kilo yeah. beast and he's just over one year old. So uh, <laughs> He's yeah. the size of a full athlete. Like. <laughs> yeah, 100%. You don't want to get in his way, that's for sure. Yeah, he's like, he's very big. Yeah, <laughs> very good. So... So what, what, program do you have, yeah. what programming do you have whiskey on? Oh, God. <laughs> he's on the weight protein anyway, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's where yeah. he's getting large from. <laughs> um, but yeah, going back to programming, I suppose one of the key things that I always... It's something that annoys me sometimes when I watch people in the gym and I never was really sure of it when I started out training, which is kind of like range of motion um, and mobility. Because say when I was doing squats, when I was starting out, I never really knew like how deep to go, whether you should do bench squats, say for just rugby or full depth squats. And people would say that hurts your back. But I think one of the most important things, no matter what sport you're doing, is going full range of movement. And that's, say, in your squat, going down to the very, very bottom position. Because like doing just bench squats, you're only going to be strong to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And even though you might only really need bench squats for rugby, if you got forced into a bad position where you're like in a really bottom position at the bottom of a ruck, that's where you could like kind of like tear a hip or something yeah, like that. Yeah, if you're not so used to that range. Yeah, exactly. So being yeah. strong in that position. So I'd say like whether you're doing shoulder press or kind of squats or whatever it might be, going down to the very, very bottom and practicing your mobility because you get people who just start crossing now and they've got no chance of doing a handstand because they've done years of like half rep strict presses or half rep ben uh, bench presses. Yeah. And they're so strong, but they get stuck in all of those kind of different positions. What do you think of that? Like yeah, that for range? sure. Especially if you want to then get into crosses later. Yeah. Um, you might be kind of stuck getting st or you're used to certain kind of ways of doing things and then you're told that's no rep mm. because you have to go all the way to your arms are locked or all the way past parallel. Yeah. So it will carry over, especially if you think, oh, I might do cross at some point. If you start training the reps correctly, it will carry over eventually. Exactly. And you get stronger in like just the, ho the whole range of the movement. So there's no real sticking points for you. And like you can always use bands or chains to get extra strong if you want say the top position of your squat to get stronger yeah rather than doing bench squats you might do chain squats yeah, so exactly. at the bottom the chains hit the floor and it's a little bit lighter and then at the top when you start to drive out of the bottom it gets heavier and heavier until chains, the chains yeah. are off the ground yeah exactly but then maybe pulling back to say strength programming like maybe if we break down strength and kind of volume training, like getting bigger, because there is a difference in your There's training. Yeah. Um, have you followed a strength cycle before or what would like a strength cycle look like to you versus say a getting big program? So I think for a strength cycle, it's more about increasing your one rep max. Yeah. So you want to get as strong as you can for say one lift or three lifts, not um, look like you can lift that. Or yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that, you know, um, so I think that's more about increasing weight on the bar as opposed to reps. So one way I know they always talk about progressive overload. So yeah. one week you'll do five reps at X weight and then you'll add a tiny bit the next week and so on. And then you might decrease the reps so you can up the weight. So it's all about increasing the total load you can lift. Yeah, exactly. And I think like a beginner strength cycle might be, say, five sets of five reps. Um, but getting it a little bit more advanced or medium to advanced, it's normally two to three reps. Like two to three reps is your your key strength numbers and then anything more than that then you're starting to kind of push the muscle more into hypertrophy and then usually when a program says say six sets people might like say they're able to squat 100 kilos for the three reps a lot of the time people might start at like say 50 and they count 50 as one set but what i'd always do is say whatever amount of sets it says you want them to be working sets. working weights yeah so warm up to pretty much the heaviest three you can do and then start your working sets and that's where you're going to get like the biggest bang for your buck like so that's when you always see in strength cycles or some sort of progression some percentage work mm. so that's to keep you in the right range for strength that day so exactly what you're saying if if the sets are six sets of uh, three and it's at 80 percent yeah then you know okay my first set has to start at 80 percent as opposed to starting at 50 percent and then by the time you get to 80 percent you're you're done yeah so it's exactly. like getting the right amount of reps done at the certain percentage and then there you can kind of like build that up each week so then next week it'd be 82 yeah. percent or whatever it is going to be in that cycle so you can kind of yeah, mathematically build it up and sometimes i'll like program a workout for someone and they'll get through it and i'm thinking it'll take at least an hour and a half they do it in 45 minutes and they're like that was easy and i'm like i barely survived the strength piece you know so <laughs> yeah. i think the key takeaway from that is that like the strength is normally two to three reps but not to start until you get to your working sets and each working set then should be you should be really grinding to get those reps out and that's where you're going to make your main strength gains yeah exactly now there is differences amongst people like some people could have a really strong one rep max it could just be super explosive and just stand up a squat really easy or something yeah. or any lift um 
then it kind of changes. They might struggle in the kind of slightly more heavier endurance range mm-hmm. where it's kind of like eight to 10 reps or six, even six plus reps. Yeah. So then again, it changes. It's, it's not always one rep max. It depends on the person a little bit as well. Yeah, of course. And then when we start to move up to eight to 10 reps, keeping this away from CrossFit, just like say aesthetics and getting bigger, it, I'd normally do that type of volume training after the strength. So what I do is I hit the strength first, do my five sets of say three reps, which will essentially damage the muscle, give it those small tears, maximize it so I get the strength gains. And then, and only after then, move on to those like, say four to six sets of hypertrophy training, yeah. which is, I normally say it's anywhere between eight and 12. So it's like two to three is strength, eight to 12 is hypertrophy or getting bigger. Um, and then anything above that, you're starting to get into volume. Yeah, exactly. Um, speaking of volume, we should probably talk about the shoulders of justice. Oh, the shoulders of justice. Because that is the definition of volume. <laughs> so I didn't realize that Sam actually does a lot of shoulders of justice as well, but basically what shoulders <laughs> of justice is, is it's my getting large program and, um, it has to be done every week, a hundred percent, but it's yeah. like after a big session, it's throwing stupid reps up. So saying we're going to do a hundred bench presses, a hundred strict presses, 50 strict chin-ups, a ton of band pull apart. It's our getting big yeah, side of the it, We program. could split it up different ways or everything, yeah. like 10 rounds of 10 or something. Exactly. It's but pretty it's much whatever you want to load up until you can't really move your arms after the session. Yeah, and we'll probably, we'll do that like maybe once a week. Just like, okay, we pick like five movements. Okay, let's just bang a bazillion reps out of each and yeah. just finish the week or something like that. Exactly. And the shoulders are just as started when... Okay. I was doing a, wa- a weightlifting camp and I was in Spain and basically we were all sitting around the table. There were 12 athletes, all like athletes that were, had either gone to the regionals or were aspiring to go to regionals or um, athletes that wanted to get to the game. So all quite competitive athletes. So a lot of the time at breakfast, lunch and dinner, all the talk was just in between sessions. It was just about CrossFit, about training and so on. And there was one guy who was really good, but he hadn't met, quite made it to regionals yet at the time. And it started with like, we were talking about like how much you should eat and that type of thing. And then um, out of nowhere, the coach gets up and he walks around to me and I'm sitting there. I, I didn't have my top on because it was like roasting outside. It was the middle of the day, it was in Spain, it was in a little villa. And he just slaps both my shoulders really hard. And he's like, these are shoulders of justice. And I didn't even know what the hell that meant. But since then, I've carried my shoulders of justice into every program. And that's it. I don't think we're meant to know what it means. No, I don't think so. And new people who will join the program, like out of nowhere, I'll just have like strength cycles, squats, a bit of CrossFit stuff, and just shoulders and justice. And I've never explained it to anyone either. So people are definitely like, what is this? And the best is then I don't explain it to them. And I get a message back being like, taught that justice training was really good i'm like what this is that but uh <laughs> it's carried on so far yeah yeah 100 percent. that's pretty good um so yeah that's kind of a thing we'll do maybe once a week um but that's kind of the strength training covered um yeah so and, and also with that justice training even though it's a bit of crack throwing it out there like what we're saying as well is after your strength training you'll normally do that really high volume and that's to for crossfit it's to build endurance in the muscle um, and also reduce risk of injury. So not everything has to be done really heavy. Like if I'm doing those 100 strict presses, I might do them with just the barbell and I could do 50 of them in front of the neck and 50 behind the neck. Like we said earlier of getting to the very bottom positions because just doing loads of volume on a muscle and making it get down to the really deep positions will reduce your risk of injury, which yeah. is really important in your training, not just training to get big, but also training to reduce Perform risk of injury well. before you get injured. Yeah. It's essentially just some accessory work yeah you know just to maintain our bodies um so we don't just do strength training and snap exactly <laughs> yeah and what about filippo at the moment on his uh, build a booty program so yeah filippo is uh, the hip band master currently yeah. um i've seen him do infinite steps each way each direction of the gym and um, it's kind of funny like the other day you guys are doing a crazy workout uh like sprints on the assault bike and burpees as fast as you can and Filippo's there, like, break his head, like, stepping sideways yeah. with his banded hip thing, which there's nothing wrong with it. He needs no. to work on his hips. Yeah. But uh, it's just it was a funny juxtaposition, I'd say. Exactly. Nice <laughs> word. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. But, like, when you're... Um, <laughs> When, when you're like when you're training like i'm sure everyone knows when you're training uh, once one thing gets good usually something else starts to get worse and you're constantly just chasing yourself trying yeah. to bring everything up to your top level so with filippo i think he had a small injury in his back and he realized that Hips it's a glute a bit, problem yeah. yeah so now he's just on a full booty pump every day <laughs> he's doing all his bands his clams his his squats all all of the things you've yeah. ever seen online yeah and the most important thing is he, do, he does them in his speedo as well yeah <laughs> so filippo coming into the gym with his speedo hitting his booty pump is 
it's pretty uh, loose, all right. It's, it's something. Yeah. <laughs> um, will we talk about some aerobic training then as well to maybe counteract all the strength work we've talked about? Yeah. So, well, did you do aerobic training when you started CrossFit? Like, was that part of your program or were you only doing your lifting or um, how did for you get a- into that? ages, um, it was kind of just Metcons and maybe once or twice a week it was like some specific growing work. It wasn't like every day or it wasn't as progressive as maybe the strength training was. Mm-hmm. You know, strength training always, everyone says strength cycle and it goes in cycles. Yeah. Um, and maybe with gymnastics, it's kind of similar. One week you'll add, maybe if you're doing gymnastics work, you'll add extra ring dips to this. Or, But w- at the time, it was the um, aerobic stuff I was doing was never kind of progressive. And then, but since then, I've learned, okay, it's, a, it's the way to go. Yeah, of course. Um, the thing I was doing, I was when I first started training, I was always cycling to school. Okay. <laughs> so I'd cycle like 20 minutes in the morning, 20 was minutes Was that bike. when you were singing your songs in your bike? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So um, that kind of counted as my aerobic training. Um, but I think it's important to know there's a big difference between doing CrossFit Metcons and aerobic training. Yeah. Um, people think, oh, I got out of breath, so that counts. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So it's, there's defi- definite differences. Um, like you want to kind of go longer on a bike or you want to go more steady, it's not always about mincing yourself in a workout. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of and that, that's what that. draws people a lot to CrossFit is the full just going mental, being dead on the floor. But the yeah. aerobic work is, well, when I started, like, say, my first two years of training, I didn't do any aerobic work. Even rowing 500 meters on the rower when I was programmed as a warm-up, I was like, oh, I really don't want to have to row that 500. <laughs> I'd try to skip it as much as possible. But I didn't, like, I was kind of, in my head, I was like, I've played rugby, so I've run a bit and... I'm fit and I'm good at lifting heavy barbells, but that's at least what I was training is trying to train the gymnastics and heavy barbells. So I didn't even really understand why you'd need to do loads of aerobic work other than just getting fitter, but I thought everything else was getting me fit. Yeah. Um, and also this term, which kept being thrown around, is he has a big aerobic engine. If someone has a big aerobic engine, I didn't understand what yeah. that meant whatsoever. At first I thought, like, if that guy's an engine, it's like, that guy's a beast, so he might be massive. Yeah. I didn't know at first, like, what's an engine? Yeah, no, I had no idea, but I suppose what it does mean is you have, like, a huge aerobic capacity, as in you're able to just constantly keep going in aerobic workouts. At a high output, like, yeah. Exactly. And so what aerobic training does, I suppose, on one level, it makes you obviously just fitter on your machine work, whether it's like you're rowing or you're skiing or you're running, you can keep going, so if a specific workout like that comes up, but also what it allows you, if you have a big aerobic base, you can recover faster, which once I heard this, this is when I started adding into my training. Mm-hmm. So if I can row, say, 10 500s at a really good fast split, not only am I getting better at rowing, but I'm getting better at recovering faster. So now when you throw me into a CrossFit workout of thrusters, pull-ups, and box jumps, even though there's no rowing in it, because I'm just fitter, I'm able to recover quicker between yeah. those movements. Um, so once I heard that, then I started to throw in some aerobic work. Exactly. And the other thing I think is when you're doing Metcons all the time, like you say, it has chest bars and box jumps and all sorts of stuff. It's a lot of impact on the body. Yeah. Like you're getting beat up essentially. Um, and you can get the same stimulus for your heart rate and everything just on a bike or in a rower where you're not actually impacting your joints or pull it, hanging out of a bar or anything. You can get the same um, kind of adaption to your lungs as well yeah and you don't have to hurt every day like aerobic work a lot of time isn't always going full balls to the mm. wall crazy yeah a lot of time you can kind of pull it back and row like say 10 to 15 500s at a moderate pace and you're just building that like recovery level so yeah what would you say like a, an aerobic session would be like a purely aerobic session say on the rower or the runner what type of aerob- aerobic training have you done last week say pick one so like we're trying to run twice a week at the moment so one week is or one time in the week is like a steadier longer run where you're not doing intervals you're not sprinting too much it's just kind of building tolerance that you can run for that long essentially so Mm -hmm. it's like 40 minutes up to 40 minutes of just running then the other time of the week would be more stop start so it'd be like intervals run this distance faster recover and then go again so it's building in the recovery as you're saying like you can go hard stop and keep the same output yeah. And then the other one's building the overall endurance as yeah. well. Exactly. So there's the kind of two types, I guess. And I think you want to s- split that into your training. If you're training twice a day, it's great to do aerobic work in the morning. But if you're not, then maybe you should dedicate two sessions a week to just aerobic work because you're going to see that that is going to really increase your output in actual CrossFit workouts. Um, and a lot of time it's really good to do that in the off season before your run up to the open. And you'll also find that you'll be able to recover between open workouts a lot better as well. Yeah. So each workout won't have as much impact on your body. Exactly. Um, you kind of forget, like you think, oh, one workout per week for three weeks. Um, 
like that is especially if you're going to repeat that's going to retake it out of you i yeah. think what's more what's going to beat you up even more is the stage two or the uh, quarterfinal yeah where you have an x amount of workouts in the one weekend um in uk i need to recover two hours from now i need to go full send again yeah, yeah you know yeah. if you're not used to um recovering or you don't have the kind of recovery ability i don't know i made that one up <laughs> but if you can't recover you're you're screwed you know? yeah yeah no 100 and that type of training is what does it if you're just doing metcons cool you can bang out a metcon but you're you can't kind of sustain it for longer periods for maybe the whole weekend of a competition yeah no you're dead right so i think um well we're about to run over time in a second but let's let's continue on because we've we've gone through our strength and our volume training yeah um, shoulders of justice of course Boom. Um, aer <laughs> aerobic which I think should always be we've said separate to your actual crossfit training because it's going to help your recovery and build that engine yeah. and then I think we should touch on maybe the actual gymnastics side because gymnastics is a huge part of crossfit except um, a lot of the time there's a clock um, <laughs> a lot of the time it only, people really throw it into their workouts when it's just programmed like they might have to do 21, 15, 9 Fran and they only do the pull-ups because they're in the workout but yeah. I often think that the gymnastic skill work is one that's really hard to learn and it's a skill it's separate to all the like getting really tired and really pushing yourself to the limit it's more just really practicing the technique yeah um, i think yeah. um the mistake a lot of people make is oh that pull up that workout has pull-ups in it or that workout has handsome push-ups so i'll practice them then but at that stage you're going to be severely out of breath and not thinking about your technique you're just thinking about your time on the workout yeah. how fast can i go and um, how am i going to break it up and that's also where the kipping pull-ups or muscle-ups get a bad name because you've got all the wet fish out of water just flopping around on the bar. Yeah, exactly. Because they're just trying to throw their chin over the bar rather than actually understand the movement. Yeah, I think you need to train it in a way where you're not, your heart rate isn't up. Mm -hmm. You can just dedicate time on moving correctly yeah. and then making it second nature. So when you go and get out of breath and then have to use it, it's just, it's just working correctly. It's not um, the movements like handsome push-ups. You're not thinking about it. It just happens. You can focus on other things. Exactly. And I try to normally throw it into, if I'm programming, I'll throw it into a session as like a fun session. So, because not every day you want to go in and die or like hurt. <laughs> it's good to have a bit of a fun session. So what I'll do is maybe some handstand holds against the wall or handstand walks and same, and maybe do it as an EMOM format. So you're resting and you might have, say, 30 seconds off. So you're not like putting into a workout, but you're not resting too long either. So mm. you make a fun session where you know you're going to practice your skills. Yeah. And then after, say, 20, 30 minutes of that fun stuff, then you throw in a row or a box jump or a thruster in with the movement to see if you've kind of gained anything from that skill session. So you slow it way down, you pra practice your technique, and then you get to work and throw a small wad in, and that's kind of how you're going to yeah. see your improvements. So there's basically three stages. It's like get master the movement so you can do all the movements correctly, um, build a capacity at them so you can do a certain amount of volume, and then do it in CrossFit with out of being out of breath and other movements yeah. yeah exactly and then maybe final pointer for um for the for the programming i think it's really good to set goals for if you look at a competition and you look at kind of where you want to where you want to place if you look at so say you take someone doing the open last year and they placed top 10 in ireland you might look at some of the workouts and how many reps they had to do of each movement so mm. i know that i need to be able to do 100 chest of bars um in say an imam format or i need to be able to do 21 thrusters unbroken always because I know that 2159 might come up. So mm. if you're wondering how many reps you should do, you should set a goal of where you want to be. Then maybe look at, like, say, the Open or any competition and pick an athlete that is around your level or the level you want to get to. See their scores. Mm. And then that will allow you build out a platform to go, okay, this is where I want to be able to be. I want to be able to do a 12-minute AMRAP with 100 pull-ups in it and other movements and be able to do those 100 pull-ups uh, without dying and still being able to move my arms tomorrow, not yeah. having a massive bicep pump where you can't straighten your arms. Exactly. Uh, another thing on that is, that's very good advice, is look at your Open scores from the last year go on the worldwide leaderboard and pick, okay, rank them. So I placed best on this and then I placed worse on this and then flip it. Your worst finishes, okay, what movements were associated there? What stopped me? And then you can kind of go to whoever's programming for you or your coach and like, can I work a bit more on these kind of things and that kind of stuff? Yeah. No, I think that's spot on. That's So that's kind of our breakdown anyway of how we got into our training, some kind of key things we learned along the way in our strength training, our yeah. getting large training, <laughs> and then... Um, how we'd break down CrossFit stuff rather than there is always a good day to come in and absolutely kill yourself and go mental and just go at a crazy wad, but also remembering that it is training and you are trying to 
get better every day rather than just dying every yeah day. you won't get better at double unders if the only time you do double unders is after some sort of sprint on your salt yeah. bike you need to set set aside some time and just do it exactly yeah. sweet well right. that's us for today um guys thanks mill for listening yep. and uh, don't forget to enter the giveaway. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, don't giveaway. forget to enter the giveaway. Jamie, What's giveaway? it to do one more time? Uh, <laughs> follow us on Real Chalk, head on and follow Wade as well. And then share the post, which will be live on Instagram. And use, if you don't win, use code uh, Real Chalk for 20% off, which is dead. Yeah, very good. So uh, yeah, so that'll be live. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers. <laughs>